Hey everyone, this is Ashton Bingham with MuseThemes.com. We've got a slick little widget for you today, our Back to Top button. Now the functionality seems pretty self-explanatory, and many of you know that it's pretty easy to create a Back to Top button in Muse manually. You can just create a button or some text, add an anchor to the top of your site, and hyperlink to it directly. However, the idea behind our Back to Top button widget is to offer something a little bit different. The widget is very simple, and several of the elements of the widget are more fixed than a lot of our widgets. The button is a fixed default button, and the positioning is fixed for the most part as well. The idea here was to create a tool that can be dropped onto literally any page or site in Muse and require almost zero setup. It follows the expected industry standards for positioning and will always appear on top of the other page elements. And probably the largest difference from a manually created anchor link is that it has a little bit more smarter behavior. Its presence is triggered by a scroll position, which means it won't be visible until it's actually needed, and you can customize the timing of that in the settings panel. Also, it fades in and out of view, which is pretty cool too. So let's switch over to Muse really quick. I've opened up our mandate theme, which is a good space for this widget given that it's a single page scrolling site. From my library, I'll go ahead and drag the widget out and we can keep it placed off to the side. The placement of this widget makes no difference. And without doing anything, this widget is already up and running. Let's go ahead and give it a browser preview. And we'll scroll down towards the bottom of the page. And there we go. You can see our button here in the bottom right hand corner fading in nicely, which is cool, and clicking, taking us back to the top. Now let's jump into that settings panel and take a look at some of our options here. A lot of these are relatively self-explanatory, but let's take a look at a few select ones. Our first option is button text, and you can type anything you want here, and the button will automatically extend itself to make room for it. For now, I'll just type the word top. Trigger position on page. This is measured in pixels and sets how far down the page needs to be scrolled to trigger the button. Button alignment allows you to choose which side of the page you want it shown on. So let's say we want it shown on the left side this time. And these last two here allow you to control the speed in which the button appears and how fast the back to top scroll occurs. But even with just the few changes we've already made, let's do another browser preview. We'll scroll down a bit. And there we go. It's now showing on the left, and our text is showing nicely as well. Now I want to do one more thing. Back in the settings panel, let's go into the button styling section. Now we have our button width and height here, which of course controls the sizing settings for your button. But do note that if you're using a lot of text in your button or you're using a large font, then the button size will increase itself automatically to accommodate it. But these sizing settings are independent otherwise. But what I want to do is style a button with maybe a transparent background using just a border, which can also look pretty cool. So what we're going to want to do is set the button background opacity and the background hover opacity to zero. And we'll increase the border width to two. And if we give that one more preview, scroll down a bit, and there we go. Now, of course, we may want to play with the text and icon coloring so that it appears a little more prominent among the lighter backgrounds, but at least you get an idea of the customization that's available here. So thanks again, everyone. We hope you get a lot of use out of this widget and find it to be a time saver. And as always, don't hesitate to reach out for any questions, comments, or concerns. Until next time.